very selective documents, and I knew there were documents that um, contradicted the ones that they were relying on, but I didn't have access to them. So I had no way effectively of defending myself with the actual documentation because I didn't have them. And I would ask the, I'd ask the reporters, go ask for this document and get it. It will contradict what they're saying. And for whatever reason, they didn't do it. Either they couldn't or they weren't responsive. So uh, that's certainly a decision I, I think I, in hindsight, I shouldn't have made. Further questions? JW? And what Jan was talking about, I just want to talk about the, uh, you know, the San Diego Police Department is wrestling now with the badges and what to do with it. Mm -hmm. They've met with some of the media talking about what is, but our, even our own uh, organization, the Society of Professional Journalists, wrestles with it. What's an audience? Is 10 people an audience? Is 100 people an audience? Is 1,000 people an audience? Um, who do we defend uh, if they're exp you know, expressing their First Amendment right? Does, uh, does a blogger deserve the, f the full protection of the First Amendment? I think everybody would agree to that. Sure. So does a blogger deserve uh, press credentials because they're covering public issues? I think they're talking about not issuing press credentials. And so everyone, civilians, everyone who responds to, let's say, an OIS, an officer-involved shooting, um, and that garners a lot of press attention. Our two deputies who were shot this last September, um, the world caved in on that. So we do, by definition, have a perimeter, and then we have an area for the media, and then everyone else is out this way. Now, is it fair? Because at that point, because there won't be press credentials, to have the media out here with the civilians vying for the attention of, of the PIOs. It doesn't seem, if I were a journalist, it doesn't seem fair to me to have you all out here. And you have a lot of different personalities in the world out there. And depending on the area of San Diego you go, um, it could be a little more difficult than others. So I'm curious to what really some of you think, if you think that press credentials are still a good thing, if we should do it. Um, should the criteria for that, for SDPD, change for them to issue that? I, I don't know. I toss it back. Um, is it the service to the public, I guess? Is it, is it something that, that you all would say in your organizations, well, this person is reaching an audience that I need to reach? Is that the criteria? I think that could be. I, I think that what our role as a PIO is to use that one person who has the greatest reach to the community to get our story out. Uh, there's someone in the community that's, I'm in good company and being sued with the sheriff and Bonnie Dumanis and the PD and everybody else because he says his rights have been denied and that he um, did not have his press credential renewed. Okay, we've got time for a couple more quick questions. Uh, Professor Dean Nelson, question. We've got a question for each of you. Um, since we have a lot of aspiring journalists in the audience, what advice would you give them for, um, for pursuing their craft? It's important to be a skeptic. It's important to ask tough questions. But don't become a cynic. Because I think once you do, you will lose sight of your craft and the important purpose that you hold in making sure a participatory democracy works by informing the participants not swaying them, informing them. So try to resist cynicism, because I think it's increasingly prevalent throughout the media, and frankly, throughout the country. It may be a chicken egg kind of thing. And I think that's the greatest thing you can do for yourself and for the, the craft that you aspire to enter into. Don't, don't fall into that, that culture. Great, thank you. Jan? As a journalism student, besides be nice to me, and I really do mean that. <laughs> I am so tired of being beaten up. I am so tired. Um, don't be in such a hurry to get the story first, which is going to go counterintuitive to what your editors are going to tell you to do. You have to be the first one, and you have to be accurate. It's a tough call. It really is. If it's first your accuracy, be accurate. I had um, a reporter recently with um, the North County Times now Union Tribune, that did a story on drones and did not get the facts right and quoted a, a congressman's white paper and didn't read it and quoted those facts in there. And I downloaded the, I think, 80-page thing, read it, culled out all the things referred to the sheriff's department that he referred to, and they were wrong. 
and I called him back on it nicely. Of course, once it's printed once, you have the big story. This is like the Waco story in Texas. Building burning, FBI agents sent it ablaze, everybody's dead, and then after the investigation is over a few years later, B section buried underneath the ad for hemorrhoid cream. Oh, well, they actually didn't set the place on fire. So I talked to him about that and said, this is, you know, here I'm pointing on page this and on page that. And uh, he challenged me on it. And he never did do a retraction. And to be honest, I moved on to something else. So long end of that story is be nice to me, research, be accurate. That's the most important thing for a journalism student to do. Do your craft, do it well, do it honorably. And thank you for doing it. Thanks, Jan. Darren? Um, for news consumers, um, things are changing in, in the media. Uh, right now, the uh, public agencies, elected officials, uh, pretty much have the opportunity to take their message directly to the public and bypass the media. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, and the more that people become wired, you know, whether they're PDA or their computer, um, public agencies uh, are going to choose to take their message unfiltered directly to the, to the public. And the media, unfortunately, or fortunately, is going to be playing catch up. And then they go and do their analysis, and here's what the real story is. Uh, so f for news consumers, you know, like I said, the more they're wired in, the more, um, the more they're going to be hearing directly from public agencies, elected officials, and businesses. With regard to students, um, you play a very important role. And despite the criticism that people like me often give the media, you're part of the solution. You uh, prevent uh, scandals from happening. You prevent uh, elected officials who probably shouldn't be in office um, from doing some, some terrible things and some very dishonorable things. So your role in society is vitally important. Take it seriously and be fair uh, and be fair to yourself. We would like to thank our guests tonight for this uh very, very good and uh, uh, provocative discussion. Michael Shames, Jan Caldwell, Darren Pudgel, give them a nice round of applause. Thank you all and good night.